see you through. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Ascension into the heavens marked another great transfer of the natural with the supernatural. It not only commemorates the visitation of the Holy Spirit after the glorious resurrection of Christ, but also marks the birth of the Christian Church. Jesus did not leave us, his people, empty handed but with the very thing necessary to complete the work at hand. Within the four corners of the earth, every person, every nation is how far the disciples were sent, but not alone. Little did those disciples know then that the remaining gift from heaven above would be of empowerment, no longer alone, and no longer able to contain this gift, for it was bigger than them then, and bigger than us today. It is the very essence that connects us to the Father, and the very authority we are affirmed in. Pentecost is exactly what we needed then, and exactly what we need today. My earliest memories are passionate worship, prophetic sermons, and prolonged altar services. I grew up with a father who was baptized in the Holy Spirit in our living room. I grew up with a mother who spoke in tongues in the kitchen. The supernatural was natural. Experiencing the Holy Spirit was both extraordinary and ordinary. So celebrating Pentecost Sunday? Church, let's not wait for Pentecost Sunday. Let's have Pentecost Sunday today. As for me and my house, as for me and my church, we need the Holy Spirit every minute, every moment, every morning. Lord, I need thee every hour and every hour I need thee. Listen, church, we don't need more empty rituals and empty religion. We don't need more games and gimmicks. We don't need more egos and logos. What we need is a fresh revelation of the Holy Spirit. What we need is a fresh visitation of the Holy Spirit. Church, we need another Pentecost. It's time for rivers of living water to flow again. And I pray that over you, Pastor. I pray that over your household. I pray that over your church. And I pray that over our nation. Lord, let living waters flow again. Church, let's not wait for Pentecost Sunday. Let's have Pentecost Sunday today. Christ for Life Ministry. Thank you for joining us. Let's worship the King of Kings this morning together. Wherever you are, lift up your hands, raise your voice, and let's worship together. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength 
for you. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant, a faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven that you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faith. away your word remains the same yeah your history can prove there's nothing you can't do you're faithful and true though the storms may come in the winds may blow I'll remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak a word it will come to pass
the rising from the rising sun to the setting say my own praise your name from the rising from the rising sun to the setting say my own praise your name great daily of faithfulness to I put my faith in you, Jean. My anchor, my anchor to the ground. You never let me down. I put my faith.
drought season, whatever that may be for you, but God is still faithful. And I want to encourage you this morning. I want to encourage you this morning. Take heart because he has already overcome the world. Amen. Amen. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to uh, Christ for Life Ministry. A blessed morning to all who are watching and serving and joining us uh, in worship service today. We're so glad you're able to join us this Victoria long weekend in Canada. Hallelujah. But this is no ordinary weekend, but an extraordinary Sunday. Today is... Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost is the day when the church was born. Christ was crucified, rose again, spent 30 days with his disciples, then ascended to heaven. Pentecost immediately followed. Pentecost Sunday takes place 40 days after Easter Sunday. Originally, Pentecost was a Jewish holiday. Right? A major Jewish holiday is called the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of Harvest. Where when every Jew is required to appear three times a year to bring an offering to the Lord. Well, today is the outpouring. We are celebrating the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Today I want to talk about when the Spirit falls. I want to talk about when the Spirit falls. You know, when the Spirit falls, it gives birth to something beautiful, powerful, and unstoppable. Can you say that again? When the Spirit falls, it gives birth to something beautiful, powerful, wonderful, and unstoppable. There. I'm talking about the Bride of Christ. Church, today is your birthday. Can we say happy birthday, church? When the fire fell on the disciples in Acts, the church was born. World mission had begun. There was spiritual surge in witnessing, healing, manifesting the power of God. People were drawn to God by the thousands and thousands the ripple effects of the fire in Acts continues even today. And all the people of God said, Amen. As the Spirit moves in the lives of the chosen vessels, say to yourself, I am a chosen vessel of God, filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in me. Hallelujah. Amen. And I am unstoppable in my witnessing. Supernatural shockwaves by the Holy Spirit that spread like a wild fire. Say fire. fire. And the gospel ripple effect like an unquenchable fire. Nothing, no one, even the devil and Lucifer and Satan himself could quench the fire of the Holy Spirit. And all the people of God said, Amen. The gospel reaches and swells with unstoppable tidal waves from coast to coast to coast. And all the people of God said, Amen. When the fire fell in 1906, the mission on Azusa Street was born. People came to Christ by the thousands and by the hundreds of thousands. They experience the supernatural manifestations, healings, tongues, casting demons. They came together to glorify God, build one another, and, and win the loss for Christ. And all the people of God said, Amen. Today I want to speak on the subject when the spirit, when the fire falls. When the fire falls. When the fire fell on Paul, he spread the gospel like a wildfire. He was unstoppable. 
It was on his second missionary journey when he visited the church we're going to talk about today. And I was wondering why this church wasn't included in the seven churches. It was really close to perfection. He was there for three Sabbaths or three weeks, but the impact of the gospel was powerful. So I'm going to ask you to turn your Bible in the book of Thessalonians. Thessalonians is divided into 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st Thessalonians. Jesus is coming for His bride, for His church. Amen? The rapture. The 2nd Thessalonians is Jesus Christ is coming with His church. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. There's a big difference with the first coming and the second coming here. So if you're ready to turn your Bible in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. Verse 1, Paul, Silas, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians. In God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that He has chosen you. Hallelujah. Because our gospel, say it to yourself, our gospel came to you and not simply with words, but with also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep convictions. You know how we live among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with a joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it. Hallelujah. For they in themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And to wait for His Son from heaven. And when He raised from, when he raised from the dead. Whom He raised from the dead. Jesus who rescues us. From the coming wrath. Spirit of the living God. We thank you God that we are here today. And you are giving us a chance to celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Lord help us oh God that today Lord God that we will be reminded. Of the outpouring of your spirit. The spirit power Lord God. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. God, we are here, Father God. We need the power of your Holy Spirit. We need your Holy Spirit to ignite us. We need your Holy Spirit. To empower us. We need your Holy Spirit. To live a holy life. We need your Holy Spirit. During our trying times. These difficult days. We need your Holy Spirit. Your presence Lord God. Holy Spirit. Come live within us. Dwell within us. We are the temple. We are the tabernacle. We are the house. Of the Holy Spirit. So whatever you see in us, O oh God, that is 
unacceptable. That is unhonorable, Lord God. Lord God, cleanse, purge all our sins. And we invite you, Lord God, Lord, to take over. Take over this service today. Lord God, help us to give honor and glory to the only one name that is above all other names. In the name of Jesus and all the people of God said, Amen, 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 Amen. And all the people of God said, Amen, Amen. What happens when the fire falls? You know, when the fire falls, you know, when the fire falls, something beautiful, powerful, wonderful, and unstoppable, unquenchable takes place in our life. You know, the preaching of the gospel, the witnessing, you know, at the church will keep on going amidst these trying times. Number one, there will be demonstration of fire from inside out. So we need that fire. There will be a demonstration of fire from inside out. Demonstration of faith. Their demonstration of faith in Thessalonica was fire full. Fire full. Tell your neighbor, back it up. Back it up. See, we always say, I am a Christian. I'm a believer. But we have to back it up, our claim. Amen? Back it up with what? With our action. In verse 5, it says there, Because our gospel came to you not only with words, not only with words, we say we are believers, we are Christians, we profess Christians, we are professing Christians, but do we back it up? Back it up? Do we back it up with power? Do we back it up with the Holy Spirit? Do we back it up with deep, deep, deep convictions? We need the power of the Holy Spirit to back it up, to back it up, to back up our claims that we are children of God. We are enthroned by Jesus Christ, that we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Backing up what we say with actions. Tell your neighbor, backing up what we say with actions. Our talk should match us with our walk. Amen. If all the Christian believers will only, will only show the world what we claim, we, what we are, you know, there will be a, a, a change in people's lives. We will be shining amidst this dark, dark world because action speaks louder than words. It's easy to say, I'm a believer. It's easy to say, to claim, I'm a Christian. Do we back it up? Do we back it up with what we say? Do we back it up? We don't do the same thing. We do something, something beautiful, something wonderful for God. Amen? In John 3, 8, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where, where it comes from or where it is going. It is so it is everyone born of the Spirit. You don't see the wind. You don't see the wind. But do you know when, where, where the wind went? When you see the devastation, when you see the ruins, that the powerful wind passed by in that place. Same thing with the Spirit of God. When the Spirit of God has come upon us, there will be some ex explosion. There will be a dunamis. There will be some results. There will be some, something, something happen within us. And the wind of the Spirit will blow right now, right into your life, right into your home, right into your family. If you allow Him, it will blow that wind, that wind of the Spirit. So lips, back it up with our lives. Amen? Not only on Sunday, but on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday we're Christian. And do we back it up when we go back to work? Do we back it up with our lips? 
or we, we, we show them that we are, that we are, we, we, we camouflage, that we, we, that we need to back it up. Amen? Say it, back it up. People hear what you say and they watch what you do. Amen. Amen. We will win them by what they see. Like this church here, like Christ for Life. We are, we are blessing them that is outside, out, outside of our faith. And they are getting food. They are getting help. And we are shining the light of Christ. There is a cross on the roof of this building. And it shines during the dark, dark night. If you happen to pass by the church, you will see this bright, shining cross that these people who are helping in the community, the, the, the food that they are receiving is coming from the hands and feet of Jesus and all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Hear your words. Watch us what you do. Amen. In my 20s, when, when fire fell on me, that was in 1980, I talked to the priest in our town, and I said, come on, why don't you preach the gospel in plain or with plain language? That Jesus Christ died, he rose again, and then he's coming back again. And, you know, and the priest told me that day, he said, not now, Ver, not, not now, not now. But later on, when I talked to the, the one who are working in that that Catholic church, they welcome us. I brought my friends, and we used the Paris Hall, and we try to evangelize people on the streets, and we gather people inside that Paris Hall. It was a beautiful experience. And we saw there was fellowship. There was people uh, accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. There was love. When you put this religion aside, and we put Jesus Christ at the center. There is unity. There is love. There is love. And the priest who said, not now. One time, one day he was driving his Jeep. And all of a sudden, he, his life was taken away from him. And I, and, and, and I said, wow. He was, that was really a sad story. Because when the fire is in you, you will go even to the to the public officials, you go to the MPs, you will go to your, to your uh, even to the prime minister, you will go to these public officials and tell them, Jesus Christ is Lord, Jesus saves. You know, Jesus saves. Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life. And no man could come to the Father except through him. And all the people of God said, when the fire falls, broken hearts will be mended. Difficult situations will be reversed. Sicknesses and diseases will be healed in the name of Jesus. When the fire falls, tragic events will turn into triumphant victory. Hopes will spring in our hopeless situations. And all the people of God said, come on, give him praise, give him praise. What happens when the fire falls? For our gospel did not come in words only, but in the power of of the Holy Spirit. I hope when we are sharing, when we are sharing, it must be, uh, it must be coupled, it must, be, it must come with a deep conviction. Your, your, your desire, Jesus' desire to, and hunger and thirst to win the loss will be the same desire like we have. The fire of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit will give you that hunger and thirst to win the loss for Christ. So tell your neighbor, back it up. Your words have more impact when we back it up with action. Amen. Produce more followers and even mimickers. That was in, uh, in verse uh, 6. It says, you become imitators. You became imitators of us. And of the Lord, for you welcomed message in the midst of the severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. They were experiencing severe suffering. You know why? This, uh, when, when Paul 
uh, went to Thessalonica on the third missionary, on the second missionary journey, they were followed by this mob, this group of thugs. They were, they were, they were, they were accusing Paul. You know, they they were trying to uh, create some riots. But then, you know, he, he Paul just showed them, who, you know, who he is, who he was. He showed them what he had. You know, that's, that, must, that, that should be our great response, even amidst this situation, amidst these circumstances, amidst these troubled times, these trying times, these this, uh, difficult times. We should show them who we are, what we have, so that they will see the Christ in you, the hope of glory, and all the people of Christ said. Amen. Oh, we, we want to thank God. They became imitators imitators Paul said follow me as I follow Christ there is a big responsibility that is that rests on our shoulders my friends we always say no don't look at me don't follow me you follow Christ well you know they don't see Christ but they see the church they see the bride of Christ we cannot say that so you know, it gives us, uh, you know, it shows us, uh, you know, it shows them who we are by what we say. The Christ in us should keep on shining. Amen? And verse 7, you became model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. You know, produce more models, examples. They're looking up to you. Tell, 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 your, tell, tell yourself, they're looking up to me. Come on. They're looking up to me. Our unsaved mothers, our unsaved father, our unsaved brothers and sisters, our friends, our office mates, our co-workers, they're looking up to you, to us. They're looking up to us. They're looking up to us. How do we react? How do we respond? You know, is that the Christian is that the Christian life you're talking about? Is that the Christian faith you're talking about? Well, if you are like that, I don't, I don't need it. You know, something like you, there, there should be a glow in our face amidst these difficult times. There should be some hope in our face during these trying times. And all the people of God said, when the Spirit falls, there was declaration of faith. Declaration of the gospel was fireful. Fireful. Their declaration of the gospel was fireful. It was full of fire. And verse 8, it says there, The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it. Wow. For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us they tell you how you turn to god from idols to serve the living and true god wow you know that uh, man man from macedonia when when paul was uh, he had the vision of the man from macedonia come help us and this is all about it right and and paul you know like his his message his message to these Thessalonians, the word, what, when they received the word, the gospel, the gospel of Christ, it, they, 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 they sounded it, they trumpeted it, they proclaimed it, it rang out. That should be our response. You know, when you claim to, uh, when, when you claim that the Spirit fell or falls on you, the gospel message should not stay here. The gospel message should be passed on. Pass it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. And all the people of God said, they echoed it. We should echo it. You know, we, without fear, without worry, without, you know, just, just bring it on. Bring it on the gospel message. They, they were proclaimers. You know, when they received it, they were, they were proclaimers amen. Amen? amen hallelujah so this you know they they uh, paul didn't mind didn't care about these mobs 
you know, following him? You know, because what, what did they say? This man has turned the world upside down, has come to us. That's what happened. You know, they turned the world upside, wow, to turn the world upside down. You should be something, you should be doing something that affects their life. Wow. He went to Berea, who were more fair-minded than those in, Thessalon in Thessalonica, in that they received what Paul said with all readiness of mind, but searched the Scriptures daily, if those things were so, and went to Athens. You know, we should be like the Bereans as well. We cannot just, uh, we cannot just claim, I'm a Christian, and then you, don't, you have a closed Bible. You don't join a Bible study, discipleship, and, and there, there's, there's, uh, there is a, there is, the, the growth will be more, you will speed up the growth when you nourish your, yourself with the Word of God. I'm, I'm so glad with this young man. He, he messaged me and said, hey, Pastor, I want to join your discipleship. I want to join your journey, journey with Jesus on Friday. And I sent him the, the, the lesson. And, you know, you, you are welcome, brother. You're welcome, brother. So this, this brother, you know, like, hey, he's hungry. Let him be discipled. So we need discipleship. Amen? And this Paul, he didn't stop. Because he's, he's remembering these Thessalonians. In his prayers, he, he prayed for them. He remembered them. You know, and then while he was in Corinth, he, he, he wrote this letter. This letter to the Thessalonians. And there's so many issues there's so many, they have so many questions, and you will find all these questions and all the answers to Paul. And we're not, we don't have time to deal with them. Powerful results when gospel is preached with the fire of the Holy Spirit. We need fire of the Holy Spirit in our prayer. We need the fire of the Holy Spirit in our worship. We need the fire of the Holy Spirit in preaching the Word of God. We need the fire of the Holy Spirit day by day, every day, every day. When we wake up in the morning, when we, be, when, when, when we go to bed, we need the fire of the Holy Spirit. One thing I've learned. Growing up as a Christian, I went down. I went down. I was so down. I was so down spiritually. After graduating from Bible school, I was so down. And thank God I, I have a brother-in-law who's a pastor, Pastor Joey. He said to me, he said to me, Ver, I want you to go to Singapore. I will be sending my pastoral team over there, and I want you to join them. It's going to be a free trip. Wow. I, I'm in, I'm in. I said, I'm in, I'm in. You can get your passport. We'll pay for your ticket. And uh, your boarding and lodging will be there. And uh, you'll, be, you'll have speaking engagement in Singapore. Man. Man. Wow. I was leading the choir and I was so down and I was so dried up. I was so dried up. I was so exhausted. I was so burned out. And my brother-in-law... Come on, you're in. I'm going to be sending my pastors over there, and you can join them. I went with there with the pastoral team of my brother-in-law in Singapore, and we were there. We were there. We slept at the YMCA hotel, and then we were we were uh, we were catered and uh, and uh, we were <laughs> actually spoiled by this, uh, and we were uh, served by these uh, Singaporean Christians. They spoiled us. They really serve us. They, well, beautiful country. I love Singapore. And, you know, they're, they're beautiful, humble servants. And after this time, I know their names and they're my, they're my friends. I hope I can get connected with them again. And one day, I went to the washroom in Singapore and I left my watch. I left my watch. Listen to this. In Singapore, they are scared to take somebody else's stuff. Because they know the punishment. <laughs> Not only that, there are so many good people in Singapore. And I told Bambino, hey, Bambino, brother, I forgot my watch. Oh, where? Inside the washroom. So he ran and ran, and then the, the watch was gone. It wasn't there, and he just 
talk to all the people in that floor. Hey, anybody found the watch of this pastor? Oh, yes. Is this the watch you're talking about? And I said, thank you, Lord. Because that watch, that watch, I, I, I got it from Saudi Arabia. And it's so precious, so memorable to me. And he gave it, and then he, he gave it back to me. So that's the Christians in Singapore. And my friend, he had, the, he had this prophetic ministry. His name is uh, Tan Kian Seng. And I love his ministry because they, 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 they really uh, uh, blessed us with, with guitars and with uh, attached case and with so much stuff. And they fed us with Singaporean food. And I was so, and, and we preached and we shared our testimonies. And then one thing I've learned when I was there, listen to this, when you are down, listen to this, when I was down, you say this, Veer, be fired up in Jesus' name. You know, I've learned about talking to myself. When I'm down, I've learned it from there, I've learned it from the Bible, and I'm sharing it to you, you say your name, Veer, be fired up in Jesus' name. So something, something supernatural, something, something happens when you call up your name, when you call up the name of Jesus Christ, and you will, you will, you will, you, you will experience these powerful manifestations of spirit power. And when I came back from Singapore, look what happened. You know what happened? By the help of the Holy Spirit, we were able to pioneer a church and that was for the glory of God when the fire falls when the fire falls verse 3 remembering without ceasing your work of faith your labor of love and patience of hope the work of faith pass happened in the past you believe and you were saved but when your work of faith led to the present experience your labor you're laboring you're serving you know when 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 that thing happened when you receive christ you must continue proceed laboring serving giving sacrificing loving worshiping the lord our god our savior Jesus Christ. That is how our faith will grow. Continue meditating the Word of God because your faith, your faith in Jesus Christ, to follow Him, you, Lord God, I will follow you all my life. All my life you are and you were crucified. You died for my sins, Lord Jesus your faith must be strengthened. Your faith must be fed daily with the Word of God, with worship and meditating, and to love, love to see the crowning of the coming King, Jesus Christ, and to hope, and we anticipate the coming of Jesus Christ. And all the people of God said, you know, faith, hope, and love. You know, this Thessalonian believers they, they, they turn, they turn from idols to the living God. You know, their, their idols, they, it's, 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 a, it's a demonic manifestation, a sexual, they, uh, there was sexual activity. There was something like, uh, like in the Old Testament, something like a temple prostitute during the time of the Old Testament. In Samuel, when Samuel was serving, there was, there was this, um, women at the door who are serving as assers, and they were they were there, and then uh, you know Hopni and Pineas happened to sleep with them as well, and th there was this sexual activity, demonic manifestation, sensual kind of worship, and they turned from that idol worship to turn to the living God. Amen. Only the gospel of Christ can change you. It starts with the gospel. Last week, Philip uh, ago, uh, before he went to, to Ottawa, he preached on, 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 on Romans 1, 16 and 7, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God and to salvation. 
Nothing else will, be, will save you but the power of the gospel of Christ. That's the only way that we could be saved. The gospel comes to you and the gospel flows through you, through you and from you. We have to pass it on. It is the power of God and the salvation. First to the Jew and then to the Greeks. I hope we can pass it on. Tell your neighbor, pass it on. Witnessing with our lips. And with our lives. It's so important. It's so important, my dear friends. This church became known because their gospel came and then the gospel, they pass it on. And their, their, their testimony of their lips was back up with their testimony of their, their lives. So love speaks louder with our body language. Amen? We cannot just say, I love you, and you don't do anything. You say, I love my family. If you love your family, tell them about Jesus. If you love your friend, tell them about Jesus. Amen. Faith speaks volume with body in action. Faith without action is dead. Amen. That we are able to survive, to thrive during these difficult times. And, and let us keep that hope alive. How to keep that hope alive? Amen. We must convince our body. We must push our body in motion. Keep sharing hope amidst this hopeless situation. It is hopeless out there. We're, we're losing everything. But give them, give them something, something, uh, 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 the kind of hope that doesn't depend on the material things of this world. Amen? So there was this demonstration. There was this declaration. And there was this determination. Determination to wait for our glorious hope, Jesus Christ. In verse 10, it says there, And to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues, rescues us from the coming wrath. So, First Thessalonians is about the coming of Jesus for His bride. The church. Amen. So get ready. Your hope is alive. He's coming. He's coming back for us. For you. He's coming back for me. Amen. Amen. So our words must be backed up with life. Amen. Witnessing must be backed up with action. Waiting must be backed up with fire. Keep the fire going. I like that song. Fire, fire, fire. Fire fall on me. Fire, fire, fire. Fire fall on me. On the day of Pentecost. Fire fall on me. On the day of Pentecost. Fire fall on me. Amen. So fire. When the fire falls. Man. Something beautiful, something wonderful, something powerful, something unstoppable, something unquenchable. That fire of the Holy Spirit will come upon your life. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you today, O oh God. We thank you, Father, for sending your, your Holy Spirit to us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That we are here because of your, your death, your burial, your resurrection. And when you rose back from the dead, you promised the comforter. You promised the paraclete, the paraclete, our comforter, the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God, that you made us a temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit, the tabernacle. And the house of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God right now. Lord God. We want to thank you. For your presence. We want to thank you for your power. And we want to thank you Lord God. 
Lord God, for coming down in order to empower, reignite your church in this 21st century. Lord God, we pray, oh Lord God, for those people who are listening, who are facing difficult situations, who are facing, who are struggling, Lord God, with daily life because of this pandemic. Lord, we pray, oh God, for your supplication. We pray for your provision. We pray, oh God, for your empowerment. We pray, oh God, that you come and dwelt in that temple who needs strength and who needs courage. Right now, if you're here listening to this message and you need Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, you need to be housed by the Holy Spirit. Just follow this simple prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. I acknowledge that I cannot save myself apart from you. Thank you for the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb. Jesus, I welcome you into my heart as my Lord, my God, and my King. Come, Lord, and occupy every room in my heart today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. God bless you. The time of prayer for our tithes and offering. Proverbs 11, verse 24 and 25 says, Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The, the generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. God and Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for today. Today is Mother's Day, and God, I want to thank you for mothers. I want to thank you for the giving hearts that they have. God, today we want to bring our tithe and our offering. I want to ask for your blessing on them, oh God. God, there's so many people who don't have to give. And there's so many people who are giving out of the little that they have. God, I ask that you pour out your blessing upon everyone, no matter what capacity they're giving. God, I ask you, those who are giving out of the little that they have, those who are giving out of an abundance, bless them abundantly, oh God. And I ask you, oh God, that you will show them that through you, everything that they have comes from you and only you. God, let our giving be a form of worship. Worship to you, our King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you today for every blessing you have bestowed on each and every one of us. Bless us again. And we thank you for what you have given to us as we give back to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Well, to give to our ministry, there are many ways that you can give. You can give by e-transfer at info at christforlife.ca. We also have a food bank and you can donate to that as well at info at good measure, good measure, in, sorry, at info at goodmeasurefoodbank.com. We can also do contactless giving and donations by having a check made payable to our ministry, Christ for Life Ministries, at 3607 Wolfdale Road, Mississauga, Ontario, L5C1V8. If you don't want to mail your check, we definitely can come to your home to do a curbside pickup. Please, Please contact, contact us and we'll be more than happy to do so. Thank you for your giving and God will richly bless you. It's not Mother's Day, Sister Lafayette. What's, what's going on? What's <laughs> <laughs> we, we didn't mess anything up at all. It's okay. 
Happy Pentecost Sunday, church. It is, it is a huge honor to do church with you, my brother, my sister, my fellow follower, my fellow believer. Um, and if you are a new believer, man, that's so exciting. That is so exciting. We want to know. We want to connect with you. We want to get you into one of our Jesus groups, and we want to just disciple you and grow together. The whole point of this whole thing is just to grow together. We are not above you nor below you. We are just walking side by side, all heading towards the kingdom in the glory of Jesus. Um, just a few announcements. So this, so every single night, we have our worship nights here in person at the church here at 3607 Wolfdale Road. It's here in person every night at 6 p.m. And that is going on. You need to sign up because the restrictions are still only 10 people allowed inside. So we are only allowing 10 people, and then that is the, the maximum amount of people. But on Tuesdays, Tuesdays we have prayer and fasting starting at 6 a.m before your work or you can come after at 7 p.m. at 7 p.m. we will be live here on zoom during the worship time during the prayer time and we will be doing that together we have wi uh, women's prayer on thursdays at 7 p.m. if you'd like more information please contact sister lafayette uh, the, the woman who announced Mother's Day today. Um, but please uh, contact Sister Lafayette and we will get you connected. If you are a woman, a young lady, a young girl that is just craving and you need that community, uh, we have a group of really strong women of, of, of Jesus that, uh, that get together every Thursday at 7 p.m. On Friday, we have a nice oh, good old busy day. At 4 p.m., we have youth that starts, the youth experience starts at 4 p.m., and we have discipleship class that starts at 7 p.m. Uh, please contact us if you need any more of that information. And if you need anything from Food Bank, you need to book an appointment. Please call the church to book an appointment for Food Bank, and we can organize it. Uh, so you cannot just walk in anymore just because of the rules and COVID. You do need an appointment. But wow, happy Pentecost Sunday. Thank you, Pastor Dad, Pastor Veer, uh, for today's message. We're going to close today, and it's going to be a good week. And we want to let you know that you are doing great and that we know that lockdown hasn't been easy. And we're all, we're all kind of tired of lockdown, but we're not tired of Jesus. And Jesus is not tired of you. So... Let's keep going. Let's keep running this race. Let's keep moving forward and looking forward to beyond. Things will never get back to normal. Things will never get back to normal. But greater things are ahead and greater things are to come. In Jesus' name. Will you pray with me, church? Father, I want to thank you for today. I want to thank you for today's message. I want to thank you for filling us up if we are filling if we, we were if we were empty. We want to thank you for your Holy Spirit, your Spirit penetrating us this morning. May you continue to guide us through this week. Father, for those who, who don't rest, may you give them rest. For those who are heavily burdened, may you lift their burdens. For those who are having a hard time surrender, we surrender to you. May you break down any walls and any darkness in our lives. We love you and we thank you. May you continue to speak through us, through this time, through our situations, good or bad. Lord, we need you. Oh, we need you. Every hour we need you. We love you so much. We love you so much. We, we lift up all our burdens to you, all our all our blessings to you, Father, all the glory, all the honor to you. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you for Pentecost Sunday and thank you for every other <laughs> Pentecost Sunday and every day after that. Thank you for your grace that we experience every second. We love you so much in Jesus' name. 
Amen. 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 Thank you for coming online. Please like, please follow, please share this video. Not, not to promote this church, but to promote the gospel. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.